Hi there and welcome to this training session. My name is Dave and I'll be taking you through this session, The Power of Change. In this session we're going to be focusing on how you can actually take in Foodle, basic CRM, and bend it to your will. Do some changes to it to allow you to capture things you care about. Um, rather than just relying on a set piece of software that works in a set way, uh, being able to say, hey look, I don't just want to capture first names and last names, I want to capture uh, police check dates and has the police check been verified, uh, medical certificates, I need to check uh, perhaps different types of um, uh, illnesses that the person's had or amputation types if you're um, dealing with amputees. Maybe it is different skill sets that people have, or um, maybe you've got a set of donors and you recognize them in different ways, a, uh, a five-year donor versus a one-year donor or new donor. Uh, it could be um, different um, groups of people that you're needing to manage as well. <clears throat> and also, when you go and view someone, do you want to see all of this information? Not really, you want to see the information that's applicable to the person. So you don't get clogged down with details that aren't needed, which slows down your process, slows down your administration. So we're gonna be looking at that. So custom fields is uh, capturing that data, how you need it. And then we're gonna be looking at contact types, which allows you to see the data that you care about. Um, we'll touch on also how you can use these in reporting. Um, so that you can really utilize that data that you're capturing and a few kind of housekeeping rules um, or at least suggestions about how to manage the data in the best way. Um, because you really, really don't want to capture all this information, but you don't do anything with it. Um, that just adds needless um, time and also with a number of different um, privacy laws around the world um, and New Zealand heading that way as well, uh, you don't want to capture data that you don't need. Um, so let's go have a look at the CRM, look at Infoodle and see how we can customize it for your needs. Right, so welcome to our uh, training CRM. What we're going to first look at is just a person's profile. So I'm going to just search for someone up here. We're going to go to their profile and just see how it's laid out. At the moment we're seeing um, some people, uh, information, we're seeing some phone numbers, email addresses, some email history here. We've seen some connections as well. So we can see Daniel is the husband of Samantha Carter. Um, we can see the household information, etc. You can see a, a number of fields here as well. Um, and we've got a number of tabs as well along the top. Now, Daniel Jackson, we can see he's a doctor, uh, Dr. Daniel Jackson. Um, let's assume that's a medical practitioner. And we've got this tab called patient. Um, I would assume that he isn't the patient, that he is the doctor, so uh, we wouldn't really want to see that on his profile. We probably want to see applicable information about him as a doctor, perhaps. Um, so we might need a separate tab for him to capture the information that's applicable to that practitioner. We may also have some donors, in which case we don't care about doctor related stuff, we don't care about patient stuff, we care about donor information as well. Uh, so we want to see that sort of information. Whereas a doctor and a patient, we probably don't want to see their finances because they probably aren't donating to us. They're either um, someone that we work with or a person of our community or a patient of ours. So we, there's a few things that we can customize. Stock standard, it's fine to have that information there altogether, but it's going to slow down the process and um, make it a little harder to find what you care about. So we're going to be looking at that. Um, and how to rectify that. Under this patients tab, you'll notice that we've got a single field here, enrollment date. So clearly an enrollment of that patient, but no other information. If we go to this information tab here, we can see a few more fields, uh, food allergies, a contact person, some domain stuff, membership start date. So it's a whole mix match of information here that may or may not apply. All of these fields that you're seeing in Infoodle are customizable by you. You don't want it? get rid of it. If you don't need it anymore, but not sure if you'll need it in the future, you can hide it. If you need to rename it, absolutely. You need to add a few more because you've realized, actually, we really need to capture this information because we want to do some reports on it in the future. Um, okay, let's add those fields as well. And the ways that you capture the information should be thought about as well. So a membership start date, that shouldn't be a free text where you can just enter in whatever you want. 
because then people might say eighth, the number eight, th, space nov for November and leave it at that. So other people may do um, eight slash 11 slash 2020. Others might do 11 slash eight slash 2020. So there's many variables and it's gonna make your reports useless. It's gonna make looking at the information um, less reliable, etc. So what we wanna do is make sure we capture it using a date field, which forces you to input it in a certain way. So the 8th of November, now it's putting it in in the format that's useful to us, reportable um, and easy to understand. You can also have drop-down lists. Um, and these drop-down lists can be customized to whatever you're needing to capture. So again, um, if you're asking for something like a favorite food, there's no point um, keeping it where someone can just type in that information because one person might say McDonald's, another person, person might say Macadies, another person might say Maccas. When you go to do some reporting on that and say, find me everyone that loves McDonald's, you're suddenly going to have a very different report. You're going to get information and numbers that are not accurate and not helping you in the least. So creating your own drop down list means that people are putting in that information how you like it. And you can add new items to those drop down lists using that little icon over there and just add whatever information you need and clicking save and that can build up that list for you. Now there may be times when you do want to just be, have the freedom of typing anything you want. There might literally be something called any additional information or other or something like that where it is just generic information. You're not going to necessarily use it as criteria in a report. You might just want to see it. Um, that's fine. Then you can have a free text field, which is what we're typing into now. Um, however, this particular field we're looking at, contact person phone number. Now, firstly, in Infoodle, um, ideally you would have a separate profile for that person and on there you would have use the dedicated phone number feature. But let's assume there's a legitimate reason for having a phone number stated separately here. In which case, we don't want to type words in here. We want to make sure that it's just numbers. And so when I try and type letters, nothing comes up. It will only allow for numbers. So at the moment, that's a free text field. Not very useful. We want to make sure it's a numeral field, an integer field. We've got these one-to-many relationship fields as well, or we call them person link fields, where you can um, look at when someone has a relationship to another person or connection to another person or a group of people. Um, where this is useful, as you can see here, is a sponsored child versus the person that's sponsoring them. And that sponsor may sponsor more than one child. So you can very quickly build up a little bit of a map of who is responsible for who or who is sponsoring who, etc. Um, this is good for mentorships as well. Um, uh, we've got some people that do sponsorships of fence posts um, on a on a reserve and so you get to plaque by a fence post and you can sponsor more than one fence post and that's how they help pay for the conservation efforts um, so we want to see who sponsors and in this case it's an organization sponsoring multiple fence posts and we see what numbers they are fence post 111 177 etc so that's where this one to many relationships useful we do have that connections field that you saw earlier, and that works very similar, but it gives you more of a uh, multi-dimensional um, view of things. So the case of a sponsor versus a sponsee, um, that's very this relationship and this relationship, and this person with more than one, okay? Um, whereas a connection allows you to um, say Daniel Jackson, in this case, is a husband to Samantha Carter. But we'll see here that there's other people in this household. So we could add another relationship there. So Daniel Jackson to, um, let's see, do we have a Jack in the database? We do. So to Jack and Neil. So Daniel is perhaps the father and Jack is hopefully not the daughter. Um, we'll say Jack is the son. We can save that. So now we're starting to build up multiple different relationships or different connections within. Um, Daniel may also have a business connection with someone, in which case Daniel is the boss and they are the subordinates, they are the staff member. Um, and you can have that all in that connection and see that sort of dynamic relationship and how people relate to each other. And if I go to any one of these profiles by clicking the name, 
Now we're on Samantha Carter. I can see that Samantha is the wife of Daniel Jackson. So you get the other side of it as well. So how do we go about customizing these fields? Let's have a look at that. So under administration, we have um, the custom fields. Now the custom fields have um, a number of different things that you can work with. There's the custom fields around people, the custom fields around household, groups, and then the connections, which we were just talking about. So people, the, the main part is the fields themselves. So we'll just go to manage fields and have a look at those. Yeah, we can see all of the fields in our database for a person. You'll notice that a number of them have a little lock and the word in Foodle field by them. And they are lacking the delete option. And that's because they are tied to critical data um, with the database. So deleting that would break in Foodle. Not entirely useful doing that. So we just remove the delete option to avoid that happening. However, we do give you the ability to hide that information. And I'll show you how we can do that uh, shortly. Um, and we also give you the ability to edit any one of these, so change names. So instead of allergies, we could change that to allergy, um, etc. So let's just save that for now, and we'll see in that field now it's called allergy. We can see the type of field it is as well. So that allergy is a text, a free text field where you can type whatever you want. Um, we have these yes, no's, which is a purely a drop down that only gives you two options, yes, or no, nice and simple. We've got a look up, so that was that drop down list where you could select from a predetermined um, input of um, McDonald's, KFC, and Burger King, and Domino's. Um, we've got date fields. Uh, we've got, if we've got some examples, we've got multiple lookups as well. So a standard lookup is um, useful for selecting just one option. A multi lookup would be um, in the case of where have you eaten in the last year? Well, I've eaten at KFC and Domino's. Um, so being able to select more than one option. It's also a drop down list, but you get to select more than one. Then we've also got the person link, which was at one to many, the sponsor and sponsee, that sort of relationship. And we haven't got any examples here, but we've got the integer as well. So if I just go to add one now, we could say, um, uh, highest ranking or might be a score or something like that. It might be a position or a tier that they've reached uh, with their training. We've got the tab that it's going to be on. So these tabs, if I just go back to our friend Daniel Jackson, that's these tabs along the top here. So we'll put that under just general information for now. And what type of information is it? What is the field type? So in this case, we're going to call it an integer. We only want a number to be put in. Do we want to show it as a search option? Now, this is really useful. You don't want to say yes to everything on this. This is relating to is searching by people over here. Um, so at the moment, we give you uh, a few uh, default ones, name, household name, or if you are using an organization view, it will say people and organization. So that will say organization name. Uh, email address, etc. But then all of these fields that you're using, you can search by as well if you would like to. So by setting yes, we will be able to search by highest ranking up top here as well. We'll leave that uh, no for now. This allow a user to update related people. If you're given a user access to Infoodle purely to update their own information, um, or maybe a few other things, and they can update their own information, but they're overall restricted, this allowing the user to update related people allows them to update other people in the household or organization. So I may be able to update my name and uh, my credentials, my address, etc. cetera. Um, but what about my wife? Um, I see there's a spelling error in her name or she's changed phone numbers. Can I update that? So say we've got some options here. You can update the spouse or you can update everyone in the household. So spouse being someone that shares a marital status with you, um, a combining marital status. Okay. In most cases, you're probably going to be saying uh, no to this. Uh, only a few organizations do allow this sort of interaction with their database. If you are one of them, then this would be useful for you. Ask for this data when adding a new person. So if we were to go and add a new person to the database here, 
we get asked a number of fields. The basics are first name, last name, email, phone, etc. Then we could have some other things like this case type of funding, current challenges, um, sales uh, decline reason, etc. So information that you um, very commonly will always want to add, you can have show up on this list. You could have every one of those fields, but then it's going to slow down your process because you have to try and find the field you want to enter. So you just have the key stuff that you very commonly are adding onto this list. So in that case, you would be setting yes to this. This field is mandatory. Now this is um, should be used very, very sparingly. Should only be used when um, it's critical data that every single person in your database should have. Um, because if that isn't the case, when you go to edit someone that doesn't need that information, Infudo is not going to let you update their details until you answer that question because it's mandatory. And that can be annoying. It can make you enter in false information just so that you can get the, the page to save. So only have that for really critical information. Is it available in reports as criteria? Now, we may want to ask in Foodle, find me everyone who highest ranking is five or 50 or whatever you may be doing. Um, if we do want to ask those sort of questions of this field, we would set yes to this. If you said no, then when you go to reports, it's not going to show up on that list. You'll still see it as output if you're wanting to. So show me everyone in a certain group or show me everyone that's joined our database in the last year. Absolutely, we can find that. And then of those people, show me their current highest ranking. No problem. You can see that anyway. This is purely if you want to use it as criteria, as filtering criteria. Find me rank five to seven, etc. Show on a person's header. Now that relates, if we go back to our friend Daniel, that's relating to this little section here. So the information is going to be under a tab somewhere or on the main person's profile. But if it's a certain information that is super critical and should always be sort of pinned um, and referenced very quickly, you can have it on the person page here. So here we can see a membership status, which is critical uh, to see at a glance. We also would have it under a membership tab perhaps, but for now we're having it under the membership status and we can see it's pinned over there. We can see what that is. We're also seeing the date of birth there, membership date, occupation, are they archived, etc. Are they a doctor? I should really say yes if someone hasn't filled in the information correctly. Um, so if you're wanting to pin it, you can absolutely do it through here as well. So you would be setting yes to that. And then finally, show on the household list block. So here we can see the people in this household. So this is that household uh, list block. Um, again, if you are using the organization view, that would say people in this organization. Um, and here we can see those people that are in the organization and the people that are associated with the organization. So what we're seeing here is sort of like a spreadsheet grid. Um, we've got the people's names and then we've got these categories or field um, custom fields. And then we can see on uh, each line the information of that person that's applicable. So Daniel is a regular um, attender and the first contact was the 1st of April. Samantha, we've got no information except for first contact and everyone else we don't have information. So at a glance we can see information across the household, across the organization that's critical for all of them so you can get a quick global overview of what's happening in that organization, in that household. So very, very useful. Um, and then once we're happy with all of that, we can just save that. So now if I go back to our friend Daniel Jackson and we'll just refresh his page, we'll go to that information tab, we'll now see that highest ranking over there. And if I go into that, I can try type letters, but nothing's happening. If I try type numbers, numbers start going in. So we can say highest ranking of five. Perfect. Now again, <laughs> If the ranking only goes one to five, you might consider doing it as a drop down list rather. So you can only select one to five um, so that someone doesn't accidentally enter in six or 10 and ruin your data. But if it's highest ranking and it's quite open ended or maybe it's a high score, so to speak, and that could go up to the thousands, then this would be more appropriate being able to type a number, whatever that number may be. And then we can save that information. Alrighty, so that's custom fields. That's how you're going to capture the information how you need. But then there's a few other things that we're just going to fly through to give you a bit of a taste. Um, 
like fields for people, there's also fields for households um, and fields for groups. We won't be looking at the groups right now, but there's the fields for the households. Um, then we've got the tabs and the tabs, nothing too dramatic about this. You've got the name of the tab. You can edit um, existing ones. You can delete ones that are non infertile and you can add new ones. Just give it a name, that's your only setting and hit save. And then you've got a new tab. But what happens when we want to be specific about what information we see? Daniel Jackson is a doctor. We want to see um, certain information or maybe he's a donor. So what we've got there is the manage views. So let's head on into that. At the moment, uh, if you've never set this up before, you'll see a view like we're seeing now, which is a default view and that's all. You can see what's currently visible and each of these are your tabs. So you can click that little arrow and it'll show you the custom fields over there. If we want to hide any of this, hide a tab or hide a particular field, you just click on this little eye that's got the line through it, which will hide it. Um, so let's hide photos by default. You'll see photos has gone down here. And now it's got a different icon. So if we ever want to show this, we can click that and now we see it there. You'll notice highest ranking is hidden because we told it to hide by default. Um, if you wanted to move them around in priority, you can just click and drag as well. Let's uh, get highest ranking back up here. It's gonna ask me which tab I want it under. So let's put it back under the information tab. I'll move that. Now, if I look under information, we'll see there's our highest ranking and let's move that to the top as well. Whatever you do here, make sure to hit the save button. Changes have been saved, fantastic. Okay, so our default view has been updated, but again, what happens when we want different views for different people? You'll have this configure a contact type. So it's gonna look for certain field types that are drop down lists. And it's gonna ask you to do that. By default, we suggest uh, that you use a field called contact type. Makes it very obvious its intention. And we'll select that. It will then look at all of the um, options that you have in that drop down list, in that look up list, um, and present them to you here. By default, it's going to have all of them following your default view, which is why we see this default, 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 etc. If we want a custom view for any one of these, so maybe donor, we can turn that on there. Now we're activating our custom view. So for our donor, um, we need contact information, dates, yes. We don't care about demos, trials, or sales. Involvement's important, information's important, groups, history, but not patient. So we can hide that sort of stuff. Now for a staff member, we care about uh, photos and contact details, but we don't care about anything else except for groups history. There we go, much more watered down. Okay. So we'll save that. Let's head over to our friend Daniel. When I refresh, you'll now suddenly see contact type. And in this case, um, it's already honoring staff over here. We can click and change him to donor. Now watch what happens with these tabs. You see, we suddenly got a few extra tabs. If I change to uh, new contact, we'll see we'll get the default view. And if I change back to staff, we'll have a lot less tabs up here. They vanish away. So we're seeing the information that we actually care about for that individual. The next time we come back to Daniel, it's all set up, ready to go, and we can see what we care about. Nice and easy. So it's all about really working out what you want out of your database. Infoodle is very customizable, um, but every organization is different. So although we can start you off with the basics that everyone uses or usually uses, first name, last name, email address, phone number, address. Um, but uh, everyone's different. Everyone's capturing different information. Everyone's using it in different ways. Even church A from church B doing different things. Every a hospice is doing a different thing, etc. So every uh, organization has their own ways, their own um, uh, workflows, their own processes, and Infoodle gives you the ability to customize those to your needs so that you can do it. If you've got any more questions on this, we do have a full length training video under the help section. You can go to help videos. We also have tons of help documentation, and we've also got a number of free training sessions that you can join, open training sessions as well as scheduled training. And that's all on infoodle.com training.